oh, we have two women on our board and two men on our board, and you know, so that means it's equal. No, it's about having equal opportunity of making exactly which I have to commend you with the with the economic system that you um, presented, with really making this feminist work, this this work that is traditionally taken by women visible because. You know, I mean, I also want to live in a community where the work that I want to do, I can do, where I can, you know, live my creative, you know, aura or whatever, or like develop myself intellectually, but like nobody wants to clean the toilets, nobody wants to like wipe the baby's butts, and like we're usually the ones that do that, like women are, and a lot of times that's not really recognized. Even in the Italian example of, you know, mothers for social centers, what are they doing? Cooking? Librarian? Like, okay, I mean, I love to cook, but like... I mean, yeah, it's great, but it's also what you also were saying that we really have to be aware, I think, that in these assemblies and in these radical spaces, a lot of times we are reproducing the power structures that are inherent in society, and a lot of times the power structures which we may in theory be opposing, but through our actions and through the way that we've been socialized and conditioned, we are actually reproducing. So I just want to be aware of that. I'll just very, I'll be very quick because she covered a lot of them. <laughs> I can see where the ire is coming from when uh, Tina was talking. But, uh, but I was thinking like when Theo's, after Theo's uh, presentation, your reflection, and uh, Atenu, and um, and the last is Kang Kan Barilu, right? Um, so what I was thinking is like, maybe a lot of ire comes because, I mean, the women are angry because the left haven't really holistically comprehended uh, the women's chores or the gender bias and the chores that we have been doing. But then what I... And, um, and this is also true that women's work have remained invisible when it comes to what they have been doing in the informal sector, or say even in the formal sector, like the secretaries and the, you know, the, uh, and, and a lot of different words. But then I would not say, uh, I mean, I would uh, maybe um, um, counter Tina mm -hmm. on a few things, like there's no work that should be male or female. No, I agree. And I, what I liked with the actual new, um, uh, your, um, uh, points were like um, it's about it's not about how many women are there or how many men are there but then how the work is managed or co-managed because then I'm kind of talking this from a perspective of um, a recent um, paper I was uh, editing on uh, migrant women uh, social center where they are talking about how they are self-managing the social center with the men and what are the different problems they are they are facing when it comes to patriarchy and sexism. But then we also have to keep ourselves um, informed about this fact that it's not only the men who perform patriarchy, but the women do too. So, um, and, and, and then again, like the gender bias which came out uh, a bit from Theo's uh, and also the last uh, presenter where she was kind of pointing out that there are certain chores that, it's yeah. not that the ch there are chores which women cannot do, but then it's kind of seen from the male, male lens that, it, that they cannot do. Or like their strengths are seen from the male, male lens. But I mean, so, so kind of a few, but, and then the kind of the holistic thing that kind of has been staying in my mind has been like um, how pathetic the left has been in, in terms of grasping the women's issues. And it could be sometimes because it's seen from the male perspective. But then it's also seen from the women's perspective who are kind of wearing the male lens. I don't know. I could be wrong. Yeah. Sorry to jump topics. I'll, I'll make this very short. I think we might have turned off. Sorry to jump topics. I'll try to make this very short. Um, you were talking about building a network for the circulation of products from the self-organized uh, factory movement and workspaces and so on. The circulation of products in, throughout the 20th century has been emphatically linked to the circulation of images. So I wonder what kind of attention is paid to circulating 
the image of self-management, the image of products. This is the cultural question. Could you elaborate on this a bit? Give me some material to work on. <laughs> yeah, um, normally, I mean, this is Edward Bernays, you know, the theory of it's interrelated with propaganda of World War One and how we're going to make consumers, form consumers, and that, you know, the techniques of separation, of situationism, all of this is about making consumers, making demographics from zero to two, the baby demographic, newly launched by MTV. Yeah, all of that. They, these people research psychology, human psychology and development, human development, and they get every single demographic, every single level of human growth and target it as to produce consumers. So how do we produce self-organizers? That's, yeah, that's, okay, that's enough. Just a thing to keep in May I answer just a thing or no, no, it's just or another girl. Excuse me, but maybe I have expressed myself uh, in the wrong way. <laughs> I didn't mean I didn't mean that uh, the female in our social center work in the, in the cooking. I know, I know, I know. They rule the cooking. <laughs> that's a man cooking. Huh? Oh, okay. Uh, that's some man. And uh, the same in the bookshop or a library or something else. But we're against hierarchy, even if there's a yeah. woman standing on the top. Pardon? But like, I, I don't like hierarchy, even if there's a woman ruling. Like, I'm not okay. a Okay. Like, more gender egalitarian. Okay, but uh, this is a consequence of the, like our history. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how it happens, yeah. but it is. Okay. Parte de mi presentación sería una de ciclo económico. Yo no sé cómo crear autogestionarios desde desde el nacimiento para tener una fórmula mágica. Eh, lo que sí sé es que durante mucho tiempo el, el movimiento obrero, el movimiento antisistémico, el movimiento que ha intentado transformar la realidad, eh, ha separado muchas veces las cuestiones políticas de las económicas, convirtiendo eso en un gran error, separando sindicalismo y, y política, y, y la intuición me dice que o conseguimos un, un nexo de unión más fuerte entre estos dos eh, niveles, o, o será difícil, y sobre todo, o conseguimos integrar alternativas en todo el ciclo, o también será muy difícil. Por eso, la alternativa que viene desde el trabajo, desde la producción, es muy importante, pero siempre va a chocar con un techo de cristal si no somos capaces de generar alternativas en la distribución, la comercialización y la acumulación. ¿no? Por ahí iría la intuición. Entonces, pensar un poco siempre en esa integridad, en esa dualidad del, del problema, del gran problema que tenemos. ¿no? I will try to speak English. <laughs> so uh, we speak in home and we speak about uh, how to manage our life in austerity life. So don't don't need too much. So we produce and for sure we will need things that other uh, industry big uh, statements or like this we will need. But our way for uh, create a uh, self-gestion life and in, in these big uh, opportunities that uh, lands have, it is produce what we need and try to, to need less and less and to, to change with other, other things. So we, we try to, to use less and less also, also the money, also the, the 
fósil combustión with have oil walk a lot biking driving some animals we will drive so this is is our little alternative but if we repeat 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 so maybe is is a bit the way thank you. Yes, uh, I'm interested in uh, these projects um, as a political and ideology uh, change of the cultural imaginary in societies, right? And I, also maybe an answer to the previous question, uh, the way to raise kids in self-management and all these things uh, maybe can be through real experiences that we have now, like the ones that you've exposed, and making that uh, available to the rest of society. So my questions for you too, Greece and Italy, were precisely um, how do the, the workers from the factories have received these ideological uh, teachings or maybe for the brainwashing, because that would be the, the difficulty right there. And uh, how, what? That maybe they think that, uh, that the way that you approach them, maybe it would be like a, a brainwashing for them. So how do you do for them not to uh, perceive this as a brainwashing, but as a logical and rational thing to do? which for me, of course, it is. And then the other question is, what's the social impact of, uh, of your project? How much acceptance, if you have a way to measure it, you've had in, in your society? Because I think that's very important, to start to change the cultural imaginary of everyone. No, 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 contesto a todos, todos me preguntan. En inglés. ¿Tú en inglés o otro grupo? En inglés, si capisce. En inglés. Not based 
on ideological uh, thinking, but is based on reality and needs. The, the workers take over the factory because they were the only option to keep working. So when the, the factory is closed and the, the owner moves everything there in Poland, the people in the crisis time, there's no work. So what I'm gonna do was the question. So they, they, it's true that there was a, a, a guys, a workers that was the, a trade unionist and showed to the guys the, the take, the documentary of Naomi Klein, and start, and start a reflection to take over the factory. But the, the point is that the, the, the needs that you are answering with this action uh, is not that um, there, there was someone that tell, okay, we're going to do this and that and stuff. The, the point is how I can pay a mortgage or how I can buy food. So the, 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 and the, quest, the, the answer is I take the factory and keep working. I keep going working. In this way, and in the assembly, the, the, is is. Uh, it's all, uh, not obvious, but it's clear that to, to, to keep going with this project, we have to keep also the, the, the political uh, dimension. Because we come from the political fight for, from the work, from the workers' fight. We, uh, the, the, this group started uh, just a classical uh, workers' fight to claim another owner. Uh, and after they move to self-manage the factory, that uh, is uh, so. It's the, the political dimension is linked, so the, the with the, with the project, uh, and uh, you can multiply, uh, you can uh, reproduce uh, self-managers if you if you if you got uh, if you if you able to answer to the need. Like a project, so if you produce an economy, so if you if you if you get your salary by your work, uh, and you, you keep a, a political dimension, so you, you get in network and you produce conflict. These two things are linked. They they they, they cannot be one without the other one. Uh, in this way, you can reproduce other experience or try to reproduce other experience, and the reproduction of this experience fortify your experience. So, be, be, uh, fortify. Uh, so, uh, but if someone find a way to <laughs> produce self managers, <laughs> let us know that we need it. <laughs> Okay, I have a long list of uh, questions and uh, topics here. Uh, now, uh, starting from the uh, issue that was put more uh, urgently, that is the issue of uh, gender. Uh, what I said actually was, uh, no, what I meant was that I believe that uh, the division of labor between men and women, the, men are responsible for production and women for reproduction is a product of capitalism. So in my mind, patriarchy and capitalism are parallel processes. And uh, what I said when I said that we inherited the situation, uh, it was a way to make an excuse to say that no, we haven't thought sufficiently on this issue as a project because we've inherited the situation where these industrial white middle-aged workers are brought up to be the people who bring the bread to the table and their women are the ones who do the reproductive work and there's no easy way to change this because uh, it's uh, uh, roles that are ingrained in these people there's not, nothing you can do snap your fingers like that and change it exactly because uh, the struggle of your mates uh, has this peculiarity that uh, these people of Yomé were never in contact with radical ideas before. They were uh, like workers who, who did nothing else apart from work in their whole life. And then they came in contact with a very, very diverse solidarity movement, which 
three goals very radical and goals which is very sensitive on gender issues. Me personally, I'm a member of a social center in Saloniki that's called Micropolis, where the gender issues are on our daily agenda, of course. We spend a lot of time on our uh, assemblies talking about how to tackle this division of labor within our social space, etc. We have a child uh, caring facility and, and many other issues we're trying to be uh, sensitive on this issue. Well, the workers of Yome came in contact with this reality just two years ago when the struggle started. But of course, not only this reality, but many other issues that for them were totally invisible before that. There is no easy uh, way out of this. We cannot expect one single issue to solve the gender, uh, we cannot expect one single struggle or project to solve the gender problem, the gender division of labor problem. It's like expecting the women to solve the problem of commodification or of capitalism or of the state. Uh, okay, we can do something, of course, but uh, not, we cannot offer the definitive solution. Um, okay, I don't know if I uh, have offered the satisfactory <laughs> answer to this, but uh, I'm going to answer quickly to the rest of the issues that are more like informative uh, about uh, this one. Uh, now, the squatting movement and the trade union movements, have they offered uh, uh, support? Of course, the Biome struggle is an emblematic struggle within this wider movement of self-management in Greece, precisely from what, for what I said before, because it is not a movement of the already politicized people, of the already radicalized beforehand members of social movements because it involves everyday people who found an answer to their everyday problems that goes through self-management. And for this, it is an emblematic struggle because it is a way to connect the idea of self-management that up to a while ago was only within the radical circles, connected to the bulk of society as a legitimate answer to our problems. And the squatting movement has had a lot of involvement. Uh, for example, the, Soli the solidarity assemblies of, uh, the, of the OME take place every Wednesday uh, by rotation in various social centers and squats in uh, the city with the involvement of many people from the squatting movement. Also, many people from more traditional left, especially Trotskyist groups. We have three different Trotskyist groups uh, within the Solidarity Assembly. If you ask me what's the difference between them, I cannot tell you. They're all Trotskyists. Uh, <laughs> then the trade unions. The trade unions are a big problem in, in Greece and everywhere else because they are very, very co-opted by the state, especially the highest um, state spheres. Okay, so the higher uh, uh, trade union, the more co-opted it is. So you have a lot of uh, help from the primary unions. And there has been a, an explosion in primary unions, independent, militant, class-based primary unions in Greece in the past five years. Precisely because the traditional trade union system felt like a betrayal. So you had many groups that tried to make a difference and all these groups are in favor of uh, your men, so they support in any way possible. Now, the general confederation of uh, work in Greece, they are the arch enemies of your men. For them, they are, your men are not workers, <laughs> to say it like this. They are uh, like small capitalists or class uh, traitors, or I don't know what. Uh, Now, how workers have received uh, uh, the intervention of the, these radical parts that I was talking about, and did they believe that uh, these are ideological? Uh, well, uh, the solidarity movement is composed of many ideological strands, and what all these strands have in common is a belief in one or another kind of self-management. Of course, they give different 
the importance in, uh, in self-management according to the theories they believe in. But the important thing of the Solidarity Assembly is that it's not ideological, it's practically oriented. And we avoid at all costs ideological, uh, uh, theoretical work within the Solidarity Assembly. Everyone is free to do the theoretical propaganda, the theoretical work outside the Solidarity Assembly, and write their, their analysis, etc. But the uh, Solidarity Assembly is very, very practically oriented. So, uh, Often we have like ideological battles, but they end very, very quickly because the workers are the ones who have the final word. Uh, we try in every manner possible not to become uh, instructors. Not, sometimes we fail. Um, and you asked about the social impact of the... Uh, the social impact, I think it has been great in its moment. Uh, apart from the more traditionalist and conservative parts of the left wing and of the right wing, uh, which do not believe in social self-determination, uh, it has had a widespread support of uh, the whole of society. And this showed that this is uh, obvious because it has managed to penetrate even uh, the mass media, which are normally uh, hostile to this kind of... Uh, experiments and the, this is the nationwide impact let's say then the impact that for us is important is the social impact in the immediate community okay not immediate because the, it's an industrial zone so there are no people living around the factory but uh, there is a we have found some ways to involve society and the response was really positive one way to involve society was to create the figure of the solidarity supporter. It is uh, recognized within the statute of the cooperative. It's a person that um, decides to contribute some money monthly in exchange for products. So they just uh, make a decision to clean their house with Biome products. That's it. And in exchange they have privileged information, they have a newsletter that goes out regularly, and they have a, 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 a right for a consult, consult, consultation, consultation vote uh, in the assemblies of the workers. So, they, on important decisions, they can be part of the decision-making uh, process. And we have uh, about 2,000 people that are solidarity supporters right now. This is a direct involvement. And then another way to uh, and another way to involve society is that uh, every month there is one big uh, farmers market within the um, factory. So you have many people coming there to shop their uh, fruits and vegetables from organic farmers from around the area. They also shop the uh, cleaning products from the Omen. And we have music and we have wine. So it's uh, 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 the message that we send out is that this is not a factory, this is not a place of production. This involves many other spheres of social life as well. This would be like a social center where the, uh, we could uh, actually have a social life together extend to the sphere of the production as well. And regarding the circulation of images, how do we produce search man search man uh, the, I don't know how to respond to this question. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe you think about it. Yes, I yes. Final comment from Andre then we can go for lunch. It's very short. It's just a little remark, um, and maybe it's also a complete different debate right now, but because everybody was just talking about male and female. I think thanks to all the different um, discourses we had in the last 40 years of diverse queer, transsexual, intersexual movements, that those categories of male and female are also questioned, and in the end it comes down to who has the power, 
and who is deciding for whom. But I think this, it's not that easy, it's more complicated, but I think we have to be aware that those categories are also, uh, they're in a theoretical base, uh, very much questioned. And that was just a little remark. I wanted to say something else, and then we can go to dinner, because uh, it's something about tomorrow, where we have an uh, internal debate um, in the Squack meeting, but not everybody uh, will be there tomorrow. Some people, I've heard, are already leaving, so that's why I say it now. And it's a little paper, and the discussion we will have about activism and academia within the Squack Collective. So I wrote a little paper with some questions, are mostly questions where hopefully we can talk and discuss uh, together and to have a reflection, a self-reflection. And I will pass them on, and yeah, I just say it because some people are leaving tomorrow. That's all. We need volunteers to facilitate the three sessions in the afternoon. Also thanks to Katia Galvao and Salvatore for the translation. Okay.